Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to St. Matthew's United Methodist Church on this uh, beautiful Christmas Eve Sunday before Sunday of Advent. We are glad that you're here with us today. My name is Andy Starlin. I'm the lead pastor here at St. Matthew's. I want to thank you for choosing to start your Christmas Eve off with us here. It's not quite Christmas Eve. It's the fourth Sunday of Advent, so we're going to walk together, finish our walking through Advent this morning. Then we invite you back uh, for our Christmas Eve, one of our Christmas Eve services. One at four and one at six. We are glad you're here with us today. Um, I'm going to go ahead and push something that you're going to get sick of hearing me push. Today you're in for a great sermon. Brian will be preaching. I'm giving our message today. Normally, I, if I was here preaching, I would tell you if the sermon's bad, take out your cell phone. But today will be a great sermon, so I don't worry about that. But we do encourage you, if you have a smartphone, there's a couple of things we're doing next year with our phones, uh, reading the scriptures. If you've not downloaded our, our, our app for your smartphone, please do that. And then I'll encourage you to take your phone out and text the number 81010. Text the phrase at 39110. That's at the zip code of Madison. Text that to 81010, and that'll sign you up for our Bible reading plan that we're going to be doing next year. You'll hear a lot about the coming weeks, but I wanted to encourage you to get your phone out and do that today. And uh, it's important for us as well. So thanks for being here. Before we begin worship, let's take a moment to welcome each other here to God's house.
and the fifth and one to eight that can be taught to love. Teach us to love as you have loved, and help us to learn to share that love with the world around us. Amen. As we continue to worship our risen Savior, I invite everybody to sing with us the hymn of praise, which will be number 203 in our hymnal. Hail to the Lord's anointed. We'll be singing all four verses.
This morning we come to you, O Lord, to worship you, to draw nearer to you and be filled with your spirit. While there are many other things that we could be doing, Lord, there's nothing more important than that we're doing right now with you, Lord. And so, Father, we just ask that your spirit be upon us and those that we love, whether they're present or not present, Father, that we fully understand the gift that you are giving to us this evening, that we fully allow that to sink into our lives, Lord, and transform us and those around us, Father. So we pray this morning for our family, those who are present with us and those that have gone before us, Lord. We pray for those who suffer and who are struggling in their trouble, Lord. We pray for the concerns of our local community. We pray this morning, Lord, for the world, its people, and its leaders. We pray this morning, Lord, for the earth you've given to our care and for our church universal its leaders, its members, and its mission, Father. In communion with the Holy Saints, Lord, we pray together the prayer that your Son taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us.
worship and love and dedication to you. So, Lord, allow this to be one of the many tools that you use this season to spread the message of hope and love and life this season, Lord. And that your name may be glorified. We ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. It's now time for the children's moment, so let us parade to the Christmas tree. Tree 
that would you could use to explain Jesus or remind you of Jesus, okay? Merry Christmas. You know what? Jesus loves you. You know who else loves you? Miss Jennifer loves you. Okay, who wants to pray for us today? Anybody? Well, let's see if somebody has a Okay, let's go to Peter. number 218 it came upon the midnight clear please join with me as we sing verses 1 3 and 4 
according to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and his descendants forever. Shall live. 
I will lay sinews on you, and will cause flesh to come upon you, and cover you with skin. Put breath in you, and you shall live, and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I have been commanded. As I prophesied, suddenly there was a noise, a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to his bone. I looked, and there were sinews on them, and flesh had come upon them, and skin had covered them, but there's no breath in them. Then he said to me, Prophecy to the breath, prophecy mortal, and say to the breath, Thus says the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, and they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived, and stood on their feet, a vast multitude. Then he said to me, Mortal, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They say our bones are dried up, and our hope is lost. We are cut off completely. Therefore prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, I'm going to open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people, and I will bring you back to the land of Israel. And you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people. I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live, and I will place you on, my, on your own soil. Then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken and will act, says the Lord. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You know, just um, last night, as, as you may notice, we were driving around, and it looks like Christmas is upon us, right? It's all time for all the hard work that we've done to kind of come together these next couple of days, today and tomorrow, and all the presents that have been wrapped and all the food that's been prepared. It's all coming into place today, tomorrow, is here, is now. And we noticed this last night as Laura Beth and I were just driving around town. Just looking at the city, looking at the houses decorated nice, showing our kids some new places, and just kind of taking in the season. And as we were driving around, we started on this conversation on uh, telling our kids what were some of the things that we did growing up as we anticipated Christmas. You know, what was it like way back in the day? You know, before cell phones. And I know, way back, right? So, um, so anyway, and I started thinking about some of the stories that my wife and I told our children as we anticipated Christmas. And as y'all know, old history teachers and old youth directors die hard, and sometimes we have to bring out our props. And one of the things that I always enjoyed as the season draws near that while I anticipated Christmas is our movies. It's all these movies. We all have our list of holiday movies that we have to watch, and if we don't watch them, it seems like Christmas just didn't happen. I mean, one of my favorites is Elf. I mean, it's just one of the newer traditions. But for a lot of us, it's, it's a wonderful life, which I haven't watched this one yet. So Christmas hasn't happened for me yet until I watch this, okay? But it's a wonderful life. It's one of our many traditions that we anticipate. Of course, it's Christmas Vacation. We need a good laugh, okay? We've watched that many of times. And then one of my favorites that I learned that 20 years ago this year, 1997, TBS started running at 24 hours a day. Christmas story. I can, I can count on that that will be on tonight at 7 o'clock, if you're not sure, and it'll be on for the next 24 hours, and you can have that mindlessly playing in the background as you anticipate Christmas, and no matter when you cue yourself to the TV to watch a scene, you know what has happened before, what is happening now, what's going to happen after that scene, okay? And you all have a good laugh. That's one of the many things that I told my children, and that I still do, is I anticipate Christmas is our Christmas movies. That's one of the things. The other one is this, decorating your house. Now, a lot of us in different seasons of life, your house decorations go from when you're first married or first out of your house in your own place to maybe just a stocking. All right? Now, my wife and I got married at Christmas time, and we had a rude awakening. We came back on Christmas, a couple days before Christmas, and our luggage got lost. It wasn't fun. And then I realized that I did not properly stock my pantry in our new we just had a bag of chips. So I was like, that's something you forgot before the wedding we went to the Bahamas. But stockings and Christmas decorations are things that we do as we anticipate and get ready for Christmas. You know, and as you have your house and you accumulate a lot of stuff, the decorations just tend to grow. Then your kids move out and then you go back down. Uh, this right here, which I had to steal and I promised I'd put back, Christmas cookies, food. All the things that are part of our anticipation for Christmas, things that our traditions say we have to do, we have to make this certain item, or Christmas isn't real. You know, it's that 
cookie or that special recipe or whatever you bring for the meal, but food is part of the anticipation that we all do getting ready for the holidays. Now, since Andy likes to dress up, I brought this for him, but he's not here. So, Tim, do you want to wear this? You sure? <laughs> it might fit. You sure? Okay. I know the choir would love it, right? You know, the glass on. But anyway. But for many of us, Santa Claus and all that we have to do anticipates the arrival of Christmas. Getting pictures made with him, writing letters, all the gifts. That is part of the season for Christmas. Now we all, in addition to movies, we have our favorite songs. Christmas songs. Bing Crosby, whoever it may be. You know, there are a couple stations in town that start playing Christmas music in November, right around Mistletoe, and then you can play it all the way through until next week, in your car, wherever you go. Some of us love it, some of us can't stand it by this point in time. <laughs> and then finally, one of my favorite things, I like the anticipation for the holidays, I said, this is the book that my parents read to me, and I was able to swipe it before my sister did when we moved out of the house, so this is safe with me. But it is the night before Christmas. It's just a good old Hallmark pop-up book from the mid-80s. And I try to make sure that the pop-ups work still. Some do. Some have a lot of scotch tape. Hold them up. As my kids would reach and grab for them, which is part of the fun. But this is something that I make sure I read to my kids before Christmas comes. At Christmas Eve night, tonight we'll read it. Sometimes they fall asleep. Sometimes they're wide awake. But... You know, all these things and many more are things that we do as traditions as we anticipate Christmas, as Christmas, as we get ready, all the things that we must do. And the scripture passages we've read today in worship, you know, I had to put my thinking hat on and pray a lot because uh, when I was given the scripture passage that we'll be doing Ezekiel dry bones, which is normally something you hear at Lent and not here at Advent, and then you have Mary's song. I was like, well, what are some of the common themes that we can learn today from these passages as we prepare and anticipate Christmas? You know, Advent is all about anticipation. The Advent wreath and each Sunday leading up to Christmas Eve service tonight where we light the candles. It's all in anticipation for God's greatest gift to us. His Son, the perfect human being that lived and modeled to us what it's to be as a follower of God. And also paying our price on the cross so that one day we may be able to be reconciled to him as long as we believe and allow that belief to transform our lives. That is what we're anticipating. That is what we're doing as we're getting ready to celebrate the birth of the Christ child. And in the Ezekiel passage today, you come into a scene where Ezekiel, an Old Testament prophet, they're in a bad time from Israel. They're in exile from Babylonian captivity. They have fallen away from God, so they're worshiping other gods in nearby kingdoms to earn their alliance and protection in time. And God was done with them. When you read the beginning of Ezekiel, you see that God leaves the temple in what sounds like a spacecraft of ancient aliens. He just leaves the temple because he's so dissatisfied with the Israelites. And now they're in captivity. But the great thing with God is that he meets Ezekiel here in Babylon while they're in captivity. He does not leave them. And here he takes them to a valley of dry bones. Bones that are dead as dead can be. There's no life to these bones. And that represents the house of Israel, the followers of God. How they've been disconnected and fallen away. But yet, they were waiting. They were listening. All that they were waiting for here, as you can see, was the word of God. Once the word of God was spoken to this valley of dry bones, as they lay anticipating something to bring them back, things started to fall into place. They started to come together. The imagery there, the bones crackling, coming together, growing flesh and skin. They're getting new life because the word of God is being spoken to them. But that's not all that happens here. Many things happen here. But as we anticipate the coming of Christ's child, the thing that happens next is that the Spirit of God is breathed into them. And then they are transformed. Their hearts are no longer hardened, but softened as the followers of God. They go to love one another and love others and show what that is like because of the Spirit of God. Many connections that we see here with Advent and the coming of Christ and the hope and the new life that that can bring to us as believers. Whether there's a moment in your life this year where you felt dry, 
when you felt like that there's nothing that can get you back on track, God is there. The Word of God is there. And this season is added to anticipate the coming of Christ's child that brings new spirit and life into our bones. Then we get to the story here, Mary's song. As we are, that's a very popular scripture passage, especially for this time of year. But there are some verses in this that I like to pick out. Here she says, His mercy is for those who fear Him from generation to generation. Here He has helped the servant Israel in remembrance of His mercy according to the promises He made to our ancestors, to Abraham and to his descendants forever. Here she is singing of the joy of the promises of God, the promises that He's given the descendants and ancestors of Abraham, that His mercies are forever. They're here for us. His grace is here for us. And here now, he is giving us the greatest gift that he can ever give, his son, who is going to show us how we can live, how we can be a follower of him. And not only that, but he also is going to pay our price on the cross. And that is something we have to understand in order to understand the importance of the gift that we're getting now as we anticipate the birth of Christ. And so with Ezekiel and Mary's song here, we should be filled with joy and hope. No matter your life circumstance, no matter if this Christmas is going to be your best Christmas ever, you've got the whole family in town and everything is just right, or whether this Christmas may be your worst Christmas ever, whether you may be celebrating without the loved one you had last year, or your family is disconnected, or the meal is not going right and you don't know what you're going to do, okay? Or not those, those gifts are not all the way wrapped yet. Or whatever it is. Or this may be the worst Christmas ever. None of that matters. What matters here is the gift that God gives us. And the hope that has brought to the people of Old Testament times. And the hope of New Testament times. And it's the gift of Christ. And the joy is never going to be put out if you don't let it. No matter what happens today. What happens tomorrow. Or whatever happens the next day. The gift of Christ is the ultimate gift that we've been waiting for. And so, while we are here, while we are feeling the Spirit move within us and asking the Spirit to be a part of our lives here, the transformation of the world through Christ is something that we must share. Christ is something that we don't need to keep to ourselves. It's not the gift that we keep and we don't share. It must be shared. The world needs it. Not everybody is as fortunate as us to know what the power of God and the joy of Christ can do in our lives. And we are called to take that message out and to tell the Christmas story. Tell it through our lives, our actions, and our words. And it's kind of easy to remember that now, today, here in Advent, while we're all wearing purple and have the Christmas tree and all decked out and got our Christmas bow ties. But we also need to remember that in the spring, in the summer, and in the fall. We are people of Christ. And we are called to share His gift. And we should allow that joy to shine from all of us so that all can see. So this morning, as we wait in anticipation for all of our wonderful Christmas traditions to come true, may we really anticipate the greatest gift of all and the joy that that brings us. And that's the gift of God's child. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we are so grateful that you're a God that does not give up on us. That while we sit in anticipation for the greatest gift that we will ever, ever May you know that we're thankful. May you know that we will share that gift and allow that joy to transform our lives as it has transformed the many people in the Bible. So, Father, thank you. And allow your spirit to do through us and our families here in this holiday season. Amen. This morning is still Sunday morning. If you feel that God is moving in your life, Moving you to that next step in discipleship and following Him. You need to come to the altar to pray. This is your moment. The altar is open for you. If you feel like this is a time where you need to join a faith community, no better time than now. So during our closing song, the hymn of commitment, I invite for those who want to come to the altar to pray, 
It is yours. At this time, I invite everybody to stand as they are able, body and spirit, for the hymn of commitment, which is number 206 in your hymnal. I invite you to sing with us, I Want to Walk as a Child of Light.